Hello and welcome to Sea Friendly Reef and to a new video here on that little channel. Next to me is Ashley. Hi, Hi Ashley. We are in Des Moines. Yep. For me the first time. It is. Yeah. What about in Iowa? Uh, also the first time. I just yeah. visited Florida this year and uh, we stayed to New York. <laughs> Very that, different states, yes. right? <laughs> my, my third USA trip cool. in my life. So, That's awesome. Pleasure to be here. Yeah. <laughs> we are at the Marine Science Campus. Marine Biology on one side, Aquarium Sciences on the other. Central Campus is the name of the school. I'm so sorry. So now we have it on the video. I would like to show you what these guys here are doing because it is, it is totally interesting and we as Germans do not have that in our country. Yeah. Things like you do here because you are working with students with highly motivated kids and it was it was wonderful to see and now I will turn around the camera student-ran lab. We range from anything from just learning scientific names. We are hands-on in all of these aquariums. We do plumbing. We build our own aquarium setups. We have started breeding different fish. We've bred shrimp. We are breeding corals. There's a whole range of things that we do here. Honestly, any type of project you want to take up, you talk to the teachers and you prove you're motivated and they will do whatever they can to help you work on that. And the most interesting fact is that, that I would guess 99% of the people working here are volunteers. Yes, so the kids can, they choose to take the class and they get a grade for it, but then there's lots of opportunities outside that kids volunteer for, like come in on the weekends and feed. You have to be a volunteer for that. And honestly, the more volunteering, the more into the program you get, the more opportunities open up for you. This is fantastic. I mean, what, what can a kid do with an education getting here? In Iowa, our marine biology opportunities are very low, but once you're here, you've got your references. We've got Mr. Embry, we've got Dr. Berard, and they're willing to help you branch out. Coming here and having that connection and that level of experience that if you're from Iowa and you don't come here, you're likely not gonna have experience anywhere else. I would rate this above working at like a public aquarium because you're able to take charge. You can submit ideas that are equal to any other like employer submitting yeah, ideas yeah. you have a high range of control. I can totally imagine because I guess here you also get the time for trying out things. Yes. Especially in the fish breeding topic. I know you are very interested and yeah. well educated in uh, breeding fish. So I mean, I mean, we are surrounded by clownfish and gubbies and some. We're working on damsels, with damsels, double damsels yeah. tiger gobies, and striped blennies. We've had a little bit of luck with. Also, seahorses is one of our big projects currently. We've got our jellies, our moon jellies just came in, and we're really hoping to start breeding those. I guess some of you think maybe these fish are for sale, but it's not your main focus. Of course, you breed fish in a high amount. We yeah. can see that there are thousands of, of clownfish here, but this is not the focus. So your focus is 100% education, 100% yes. kids. I mean, we saw 30 kids quite a few minutes ago yeah. um, hanging on Claude's lips and Alex's lips um, because they just wanted to have information and asking the teachers how they can breed shrimps and stuff like that. It's unbelievable for a, for a reefer like me, an aquarium enthusiast. It is so great to see kids like that. How long are you in the reefer hobby? I have been at the school, I think 2019, the year of COVID. I was online classes, so yeah. 
it was literally just lectures and learning about things that were in the lab that I never actually got to see. And then I came back for my senior year, so the year that I graduated, I was in both programs at once. So I would just spend an hour over on one side and then go right to the other side for another hour. And being immersed in both sides of the lab at the same time, because they both bring so many different learning opportunities, really expanded my view, almost overwhelmed me with how many opportunities were brought up. There was so much to learn on both sides. What is your motivation? I mean, you are here seven days a week. Oh no, yeah. seven, but five days or seven I days? I was seven days a week throughout the summer. Now I'm Four. here one to two days a week, just for okay. the school year. But without so. getting paid. I mean, the, the, you have to have a vision or motivation behind that. Maybe you can explain that to us. I mean, I have like a, a big love for the ocean and conservation as well. And just, it really saddens me to see the way that our oceans are right now. And even though I can't go see the ocean here in Iowa, I still know the way that like our water affects our I know that from Germany too, here. yes. <laughs> and I want to be able to have that experience to help conservationists. So I do strive for a career in marine biology, aquarists, I'm honestly just the whole spectrum I'm interested in. I want to be able to make a difference. And even if it's just with a couple fish, I want to be able to make a difference or inspire like young people to get more into things, even if it doesn't directly affect them. Awesome. Can you show us some of your favorite projects you're working on right now? I guess I mainly have been doing live food culture. Okay. So I've got algae over here. It doesn't look super exciting, but This is like the base of our breeding project. If we didn't have algae, we wouldn't be able to feed it to the coat pods. We wouldn't be able to feed it to the rotifers. And without our coat pods and without our rotifers, we can't feed our fry fish yeah. or before they metamorphosize, they can't eat our regular food. So we have to have stuff like algae bubbling 24 seven, or we've got our brine, which is over here which we feed out <laughs> and um, we do 24 hour brine. Yeah. So it's an everyday thing that we heat it up and we have our eggs filtered in our little. Oh, wow. Yes. We have a very DIY system going on, but we've got some of the strongest magnets in the world right here oh. to take our shells yes. off of our brine so we can safely feed them to our fish. And where do you get all the knowledge from? We get a lot of our knowledge from Dr. B and Mr. Embry. They give us whatever they can, but they also inspire us to go on and search even further for more information. That's why all of our projects are still student led. Like we are taught what they know, but we're also told to go learn more, whether that be through our own research, our own trial and error. Like we have our sea horses right here that we're still trying to breed. And even though you can Google it and it says your seahorses are going to breed at 75.8 degrees Fahrenheit, that's not necessarily going to happen right away. So we have to experiment and still find our own information before we have success. And we have to say that all these projects are made by students. Yes. So there is no uh, industry behind that. No. Especially when it comes to costs. So you get donation and yeah. with that donations you can invest into your science yeah so we do have like industries and certain people invest in us but not in the way that they come in and they do it for us they encourage us or they help with like the funding because we are still high school students not me but <laughs> working with them they're still high school students so Since our schooling system can only put so much money into our program, we do reach out for help and we expand our knowledge because we're just one facility. We know that even though we have one tank of seahorses, there's going to be someone out there who has two tanks of seahorses yeah. and are breeding. So we appreciate any type of like educational value we can get from outside people. What is, in your opinion, the most important thing you can teach in an organization or in a project like that to the kids the most important thing i'm like a big fan of listening 
just listening to other people we were in there listening to the powerpoint slides and the amount that you can learn from just asking questions and getting involved with what you're in you're going to go miles further than if you just sit there and wait for someone to take initiative for you thank you ashley so much for that really quick overview here yeah. but um if you want to have some more information Ashley is doing a really, really good interview together with Alex on the Abyss channel. I think it is so important to rise up the next generation with things like that. Because if you are not getting in touch with fish, with corals, with the ocean, you will lose everything of that, in my opinion. Thank you so much for your job yeah, and for you. your time. <laughs> Guys, please leave a comment. I'll link your uh, website also directly yeah. under this video. So yeah, the people can also check that out. And if you want to help, feel free to do that. Thanks a lot. Okay, thank you. <laughs>